Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Symposium 16, the role of collections management systems in the worldwide movement to round trip data enhancements. I'm sorry that my co-chairs David Shorthouse and Falco Glockler and I cannot be there in person to contribute, but we want to thank Nikki Nicholson for taking on the role of local moderator. Our intent was to focus in on round tripping of data and more specifically annotations to consider our community's current state of preparedness, the implications on existing infrastructure focusing on collection management systems and what our plan might be going forward. Thus the grand challenges. Someone or something has a valuable enhancement to make elsewhere from the source where original data or information are generated or transcribed and wishes to broadcast these statements to the originator and to others who may benefit and expects persistence, discoverability, and attribution for their contributions alongside the source. However, this symposium will not address the sociological implications of annotations, nor will it delve into the identifiers required to make all of this possible. We would like to thank the speakers in our symposium and think you will find the talks are diverse in their approach and potentially speak to the need for alignment involving standards, protocols, and implementations. At the end of the session, we will have some time to discuss this. My colleagues David Falco and I will provide the first talk that will serve as an overview of where our community has come in considering annotations and note some challenges remaining. I know something you don't know, the annotation saga continues. So let's start with a definition for annotations. We like the Wikipedia version. An annotation is extra information associated with a particular point in a document or other piece of information. In its simplest form, a feedback loop can represent an annotation where there is an action or an object that has an effect on another, which then promotes a need to provide feedback to the source. But for data, this communication requires a data structure and an exchange protocol. Over the years, our community has given thought to annotations and either developed or implemented several systems. As some of you will recall, one of our first attempts to consider annotations came from the NSF-funded filtered push project more than 15 years ago, led by me and several of my colleagues. It attempted to solve the issue of no return path of the data to the source collection as documented in this figure. I included it because I thought some of you would enjoy the blast from the past involving projects and systems many of us participated in. The project led us to develop an annotation system that was successful for a moderate amount of data, but required significant resources and had scale challenges at that time. There was a need to develop a standard and protocol to allow for annotations to be shared. And for this, we worked with the W3C Web Annotations Group, and I'll say more about this a little later. However, our largest challenge was the push component of knowledge back into the collection management systems. And again, I'll talk about this a little later. The Anesis project out of Germany was developed as part of the synthesis project and implemented in the edit platform, which similarly used the annotation model derived from the W3C web annotation group. Hypothesis is a generic commercial application developed for web page annotation. It was adopted by Pensoft Publishers to provide a mechanism for article readers to provide feedback that could include links to data sources. More recently, Pensoft has adopted the ability to annotate via nano publications in partnership with Knowledge Pixels. And there will be a talk specifically on this by Lubo and colleagues on Thursday. Also recently, our colleagues in DISCO have been developing annotation infrastructure and a new prototype interface. To date, all of these annotation systems have different structure and schemas. However, some work was done 
to try and establish a standard for data-driven annotation, building off of the W3C web annotation data model. Filtered Push specifically investigated extending the model beyond web pages and documents in order to annotate data. The W3C web annotation data model was ratified in 2017. We don't have time to get into the details, but essentially the model has three entities, the annotation itself and its relationship to a body and a target. An annotation may reference one or more targets, zero or more bodies, each with IRIs, and all may have properties. Attribution may be represented as a creator resource, and intent may be represented as a motivation resource. The late Bob Morris led us in participating in the W3C annotations group to consider data annotation. This led to the concept shown in this diagram, where in addition to the body and the target, we introduced the concepts of evidence and expectation. However, this data extension was not included in the web annotation standard. The challenges for data annotation were under provenance, versioning, persistence, and communicating the creator. Technically, relational data mapping and semantics of terminology, and procedurally, stating the discoverable evidence. If we were to consider a highly generalized diagram, this is essentially where we are today in sharing our data. A given institution's collection management system is typically a relational database with data models that can vary greatly. They are not necessarily aligned with exchange standards that flatten the data. It's also important to note that today, that users generally download data from GBIF and other aggregators rather than from individual collection portals or collection management systems. If we were to consider how feedback denoted by the red arrows is given today, it would include email, web forms, chat, and whatever we were supposed to call tweets these days. But a standardized reverse exchange schema and protocol does not exist. However, if we were to envision a very simple annotation system, we identified some major gaps. We have no harmonized adoption of annotation standards and associated protocols. We have no repository for the annotations to be stored at scale and no translation service allowing mapping back to a highly heterogeneous set of structures in collection management systems. Our last talk in the symposium will discuss the digital extended specimen and the box highlighted in red is a key component of the proposed infrastructure, including collection management systems and annotations. But in order to realize the dream, we need to make some decisions at a global level, including defining an annotation standard, an annotation protocol, translator services, provenance and versioning, a centralized or distributed model, and importantly, a business and governance model, potentially involving the Alliance for Biodiversity Knowledge. So as the standards essentially drive the ability to implement the digital extended specimen and other infrastructures, we think it's time to reinvigorate the annotation interest group. Our opportunity to do this could come in November when Tadwig's interest groups and task groups will meet. Thank you very much. Hopefully my colleagues and I are, are with you remotely and can answer questions.